So in Blender 4.5, we got this import CSV geometry node, and I was pretty excited about this because I've used CSV a lot in different pipeline tools and asset tracking systems. And of course we can do charts and graphs and some pretty cool data visualization. Um, but I wanna show you a little bit about how this works. So if you have a CSV file, it comes in as a point cloud and you can just hook that straight into geometry and we can see what it does here in the spreadsheet. So you'll notice our domain changed to point cloud um, because it comes in as a point cloud. So this is my CSV data and you can see it's basically like an attribute of each point or it, it literally is an attribute of each point. It's a float attribute. The way we can access this data is with a read named attribute node. And you can see if I just plug this into an output, it'll populate my outputs with the new data. So we can use this data to drive anything we want. But one thing that I thought was lacking is there's no CSV export option. So I made this extension called Atrio CSV. Um, it lets you choose a directory to export into, a subfolder in that directory, and then a name um, to name your CSV. So I'll just name this demo object and let's add a UV sphere. So say I animate this with a bend modifier. I can actually set a start and end frame, um, choose my domain. I'm on a mesh object, so I choose the domain of point, which means the vertex domain. And then I can refresh attributes and it shows me that I have a position attribute. If I make geometry nodes on this object and I add an example of a unique attribute per vertex per frame, some kind of attribute like this might be really valuable for you to have and analyze or modify. So now when I refresh attributes, you can see I also can include some value. We also have an option for precision if it's full or reduced. Full might give you extremely large CSV files if you have a lot of data. Um, so there's a reduced option, which basically just rounds everything down to a float 32. And then I can export these as CSV files and you can see it tells me 20 frames were exported. So that means 20 CSV files were actually created with all of this data. And now that we have those, I have a CSV import option. And to show you how this works, I'll import with position data. You can see it adds a new object. And this is made up of points because we're sampling points from the CSV data. And it made this automatic geometry group. And I'm going to make the radius bigger so we can see. But it made our sphere all of its vertices as points. And the cool thing about this geometry node system is it parses through those 20 data files and lets us play back the animation in real time. Another way that I can utilize this is if I duplicate this original object that I encoded from and I remove that simple deform and this geometry node group. So now it's just a regular sphere again. I can reference this sphere inside of this geometry group and it can play back the identical animation on this object. So what's cool about this is we can bake any animation we want. We can edit that animation in Excel or we can loop through it in Python and run operations. And then we can run it back into Blender, get that final result. So if I don't even have position in what I encode, I can still import and you can use this import data as point cloud to do that. And you'll see I have this new object called Atrio data object. And this doesn't look like much right now, but if I go into the point data, this automatically just has all that data. It's just not driving anything. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add another geometry node system on top of this and gather that data however you want to into your object. And you'll notice I was in the point domain. We can also pass edge attributes, face attributes, and face corner attributes which represent the UV map itself. So coming from my background with vertex animation textures, this seems really interesting to store complete raw data. 
and be able to read back any frame at any time. In a vertex animation texture, we only get four channels at most if we include the alpha channel. And here in CSV data, we can store as many channels as we want. It's holding essentially cached data to CSV. And this node actually does a really good job with file operations. So import export, depending on your file size, is not really a big deal. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is useful for you.